Hello. Welcome. Today we are talking about why you may have tried systems or rhythms or routines in the past and they haven't worked for you. And also go into some new approaches, um, some new ways of thinking about that structure that you can try to uh, finally create systems that do work for you in the season of life that you're currently in. And I think this is such an important topic because I'm guessing that the concept of systems probably isn't brand new to you. You've heard about systems, you've heard you need them, maybe you're not always super clear on which ones or why, but I'm guessing you've also tried to implement some of these things. And if you're still looking for solutions because you weren't able to stick with it or it just didn't, it just didn't work, it just didn't feel right to you, um, that is what we're talking about today. There's nothing wrong with you. I think that this happens to a lot of people and it's not something that I've heard a whole lot of people talk about. So it doesn't mean that you can't be an organized person or that you can't have systems or that you it's just not for you. Um, it's likely that you've just been going about it in a way that isn't right for you. And so today I'm going to share some of the reasons that you may have struggled with systems in the past and then talk about some new ways of looking at it, some new ways of planning those out um, to hopefully inspire you to give it another go, right? Uh, if you haven't met me, I'm Jenna of JLane Virtual Solutions, where I help you spend less time on the must-dos and create more time for joy through simple systems and rhythms, both for your home and for your business. And our topic for today really lends itself to both the home side and the business side. Um, we're not necessarily going to lean super heavily toward one or the other. Um, so yeah, whether you want to feel a little more organized in your home or your business or both, today's topic is for you. So if you have tried systems before, if you've tried making your you know, weekly plans and your project management lists or your morning routine or whatever it is and they haven't worked for you, there are a few reasons that that might be. And I would be super curious to hear about your experience with this as well. So as we're going through this, if something comes up that resonates with you, drop it in the comments. Let me know something you have tried before that you struggled with or kind of um, where you felt like you were getting stuck. Um, and also, if you have anything else to add, um, I would love to see comments on other reasons why you think things may not have worked for you or reasons that things did work for you really well. So some of the things, some of the reasons, I guess, underlying why these systems may not have worked, why you may not have been able to follow through or implement them are a few different reasons. One is that it's possible that it just actually wasn't that important to you at that time. Maybe somebody told you that you really needed it. Maybe you thought you should have a certain system in place, but the truth is it wasn't really a priority. And you know what? That's okay because everything can't be a priority. We have to be intentional about where we put our time and our energy. And if something is not important to you and is not a priority for you, yeah, you're less likely to follow through. And you know what? That's okay. <laughs> if it's not important to you, then you don't have to put a lot of your time and energy into it. You don't have to guilt yourself over it or make yourself feel like you should be able to do this thing because other people are, because someone told you that you needed it, right? The second reason might be that you are overcomplicating things. Your system might be a little bit too complex or have a little extra steps or things to it that feel difficult to you. And our systems are really meant to make things feel smoother and easier. And so if they're not doing that for you, then we need to look at the system, at the process that you've laid out and take a closer look at how it is set up and how it's running. <clears throat> Sorry, I have a little bit of a sore throat today, so excuse my water breaks and all that. Um, another reason systems may not have worked for you in the past 
is that they were too rigid. And I think this comes into play a lot when we're talking about routines, when we're talking about scheduling, time management, things like that. If you are trying to plan out every minute of your day or even every 15 minutes or every 30 minute increment of your day, you're going to find that it's really hard to stick to, number one, because it feels really confining, and number two, because life doesn't operate that way. There are gonna be unexpected things that come up. We have periods of transition where we're moving from one task to the next. So we don't want to have it be such a rigid thing. We wanna be building in that flexibility and that wiggle room all throughout our systems, our schedules, our routines. And then finally, and the one that I think is probably the most at the root of struggling to implement systems is that you're trying to use strategies that go against the way you naturally function. You're taking someone else's idea or someone else's structure and trying to plug yourself into it when maybe you are a very different person from the person who created it. Maybe your life or your business is very different from the person who created it and you're trying to fit yourself into that box rather than create a structure that is built for you, right? So the idea behind systems and habits and routines, things like that, is not to change who you are and who you function so that you can fit into this structure. The goal is to really get clear and go deeper on how you function best and choosing strategies that support who you already are and what your life is already like, right? So those are what I see as the four biggest reasons why people struggle with implementing and maintaining their systems. Number one, it's just not actually that important to you. Number two, you're overcomplicating things. Number three, you're trying a structure that is too rigid and doesn't leave that wiggle room. Or number four, you're using strategies that simply don't fit with the way you function naturally. So what can we do about this, right? Because I will tell you all the time that we can all benefit from having systems and rhythms in our lives, both in our home life, family, personal, business, all those different areas. It helps things move with a little bit more ease. It helps us have to think a little bit less when we already have a plan for what's going to happen. Obviously, we are not going to systematize every single part of our lives because we're not robots. Um, but there are going to be priority areas for you where this could be really beneficial. So how do we do this in a way that will actually work for you, that you'll actually be able to implement and follow through on and feel like it's lightening your load rather than weighing you down, right? Because the systems and the rhythms are meant to make you feel better, not to make you feel heavy or like you're failing at something. That is that is not the goal. And if that's what's happening, then we really need to look at what's going on and find a solution for that. So <clears throat> if you are thinking of any other reasons that you've experienced why systems and things haven't worked for you, I would love you to share them in the comments. And now we're going to kind of shift gears and talk about what we can do about it, how we can still implement a structure even if some of the things you've tried haven't worked. So number one, if, if in the past it's been because you were trying to systematize things and put effort into things that weren't that important for you, we want to first get clear on what your values and priorities are. And it's really the focus on values. Because when you understand what's the most important to you as a person, you know, even if we're talking about your business, what are your values? What are your things that are most important to you? That is going to highlight the priorities and the areas that you want to put your time and energy into. And those 
are the areas where we're going to look at systems structure. Maybe you already have some systems in those places, maybe you don't, right? If you don't, or if you have some that aren't running smoothly, those are the areas we're gonna focus on because those are the areas that are the most important to you. They're not the most important to me, they're not the most important to some expert over here, they're important to you. That's what we wanna focus on. If you're struggling with overcomplicating things, if you have too many steps, too many tools, too many details, we want to keep it simple. And I have a blog post on my process for creating an SOP, which is your standard operating procedure. It's basically just the process you follow, the steps you follow in your system. I'll link to that blog in the comments. Um, but we keep it simple and go through a few different steps to ensure a few different things. That the things you're doing both are need to be done, are essential, are important, are supporting your goal in some way, and that they need to be done by you. Those are the two biggest questions. Does this need to be done at all? And does it need to be done by me? Because if it doesn't need to be done at all, it's gone. If it doesn't need to be done by you, then we start looking at how to automate or delegate some of those things to take them off of your plate. So that comes down to how we can keep those systems more simple and not overcomplicate things. If you're feeling like your systems have been too rigid or if you're trying to manage your time in an overly structured, overly rigid way, I would encourage you challenge yourself to leave some wiggle room. Leave some blocks in your day where there's nothing there. Really what I would recommend is every time you have a block of something that you're doing, leaving a gap between every single block. So you give yourself room for transition, you give yourself room to kind of shift gears mentally or if something takes a little longer than you thought, you have that wiggle room built in. And then when you're feeling really brave, <laughs> you leave a big block that's wide open. So that way when an appointment comes up or your kid's sick or you have an unexpected meeting pop up, you know, whatever it is that you have open blocks of time where you can shift things around and it doesn't feel like an emergency, it doesn't feel like a panic situation. So we want to practice leaving more and more flexibility and wiggle room in our plans. Because like you and your business, your systems too, and your schedule, all of these things, they're gonna evolve and change over time. And if we have space built in to accommodate that, to give us that cushion, it feels much less stressful, much less anxiety inducing than when we are packed in super tight and something comes up and we're like, I literally don't have time for this. You know, that's not where we wanna be. And then finally, I want to come back and spend a little bit more time just talking about that idea that you have been trying to create and implement systems based on what worked for somebody else and trying to fit yourself into their mold and it isn't working, right? We want to find a way to leverage your natural strengths and your natural tendencies instead of fighting against them. We're not fitting you into the box of the plan. We're fitting the plan around you, if that makes sense. So I, I don't know what made this pop into my head earlier, but it, it makes me think of someone who goes on a no carb diet when pasta is their favorite food. Like that's not gonna work, it's not gonna feel good, they're probably not gonna be able to stick to it, it's going to feel like a punishment instead of something that's supporting them, right? Same thing with your systems and your rhythms. We want to embrace the things that you enjoy and the things that you naturally do rather than trying to completely change your behavior, right? Sometimes we do need to change some habits but it shouldn't be a whole overhaul of who you are and how you function. That's not something that we need to change. We need to find strategies that fit who you are and who you function. So for myself, for example, I love a checklist. <laughs> I love it. I have lists in my paper planner. 
I use Trello for everything in my business. I have a whiteboard with my top priority items for my home for the day. I love a checklist. But somehow the idea of like a behavior chart or a chore chart for my children has never, never worked for me. <laughs> and so that's one of those things now when that kind of a concept comes up and sometimes my husband will suggest, oh, maybe if they do this X number of times, they can earn a reward. And I was like, you know what? I'm not gonna start that because I know I'm not gonna follow through on it. That's not how it's gonna work. <laughs> Let's come up with another plan, right? So if checklists aren't your deal or charts aren't your deal, there are other strategies that we can use to keep you on track with getting done the things that are the most important to you in a way that feels a little bit more natural. And yeah, again, you don't need to change who you are, how you function. We can start with one small habit and I'm actually um, doing a lot of reading on habits right now. So I'm anticipating a full live or some more content around that coming soon, so stay tuned. But I wanna leave you with a few questions you can ask yourself, particularly if you think you fell into this category of I've been trying things, but I'm just kind of butting up against them. They're not working for me. It doesn't feel right. Here are some questions that I want you to ask to kind of start uncovering what kind of strategies might work the best for you. And they are so simple, but we often don't think of the simple things, right? So first I wanna ask you, what have you already tried that didn't work? And why do you think it didn't work for you? Next, I want you to ask yourself, what has worked for you? Because when you look at your life and your business, you probably already have some systems and rhythms in place. And these might be a little bit harder to think of because they're just something that you do we want to tap into that because whatever's working there is what we want to implement in other areas so what does work for you or what has worked for you in the past that we could maybe circle back to and try again and then finally what motivates you sometimes for me it honestly is just checking off the list for a while i felt like i was going through my work days i was busy i was doing all these things and then at the end, I was like, well, where did my time just go? So I actually made myself a list in Trello. And instead of just like archiving a task when I was done with it, I would move it to my done list so that at the end of the week, I saw this huge list of all the things I had done. And I was like, oh, that's where my time went. That's what I was doing. Um, something like incentivizing for me personally doesn't really work. <laughs> I would rather, if I have to sit down and do a task, I would rather get like a really good coffee drink or a lime seltzer or put some music on and make it enjoyable a while back. So I used to run a fair amount. <laughs> and then when COVID hit, I kind of just stopped exercising. And so a while back I was like, okay, I just wanna get up to being able to run 5K again without stopping. And when I do, I'm gonna buy myself like a cute new workout outfit. Well, I did it. I did my goal, I did my plan, I listened to music or a podcast and I did my runs, I got to 5K and then I never even <laughs> bought myself the reward because I didn't actually really care about the reward that much. It was more, that, that one was more of just like an internal satisfaction in knowing that I could still do this thing. So know what does and does not motivate you and that will work its way into some of these systems as well. So, I hope that this was helpful for you. Some of the reasons why you may have struggled with systems because let me tell you, you are not alone. There's nothing wrong with you. It is so common, I think, that people do things the way they think they're supposed to and it just doesn't work and then they think, oh, well, I'm just not a systems person. That's not true. There are ways to make the structure work for you and support you and build you up. And so I hope that some of the ideas I shared today will help you to kind of experiment with that. A lot of this, like everything in our business, is trial and error and figuring out what works and what doesn't. And so I'd love to hear from you of what you're trying, how's it going, is it going well, not so well. I want to know. And I just want to kind of leave you with the thought that you'll follow through more when you are committed to the result, 
when you are tapping into your natural gifts and your natural tendencies and when you can find a way to enjoy the process. And I would love to be able to help you to do all of those things. <clears throat> if you're resonating with this, if you're like, yes, I know I need the systems, but I'm not totally sure what the right way is for me, I want to invite you to book a call with me. I'll put a link down in the comments. We start with a 45 minute one on one conversation of really just talking about a lot of the same stuff that I've covered today. Like where where are your priority areas? What's important to you? Where are things feeling messy and you want to clean it up? And then talking about some of those first steps to get the systems and the structure in place. And if we continue to work together in my one on one coaching, we have 12 weeks together to work through your goals, your values, your priorities, your home systems and rhythms, your business systems and rhythms, and leave you in a place where you have a structure built around you that supports all the different areas of your life because we all have a lot of different things going on and we want them to be supporting each other and supporting us instead of competing with each other and draining us of our energy. And for me, the beauty of being able to work with people one-on-one -on -one is that we can customize every one of those pieces for you, for the way that you like to work. This is not a plug and play, like here are my steps, do these steps. That's not, that's not what we're doing here. We work together to create the structure, the systems, the rhythms that are gonna save you time and energy. And it's all customized to your life in this current season, the way your life actually is and the way that you naturally like to function. So I would love to talk to you more about this. Feel free to leave a comment or send me a DM or just go ahead and book a call and we'll start getting to the bottom of what your system struggles are and how we can help your life run a little bit more smoothly. All right, I will be back here next week. Thank you so much. I hope you have a beautiful day. Bye-bye.